Hello and welcome to this special edition of C++ Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to follow up with some of the things that I talked about with Borland Turbo C++ 3.0 from our last special edition, because I learned a few things after recording it, and I've got a couple of errors that I need to correct. So the first off is that I kept showing going to the DOS shell here and exiting back out to see the results of the program because I didn't really quite understand how to actually get output from our application. So let's add our hello world code back in again. So we can compile with no problem. And now we've got a run menu with a debugging capabilities and all sorts of things in our IDE built in. So if we hit run, it ran, but then what happened? So what it turns out we needed to do was to go and look at the user screen output. So we can see here, hello world. We've got our printed output from our program. So that's definitely better than having to exit to the DOSH cell and come back again. But this also helps us understand a little bit better how to do things like debugging. So let's see if we can run to the cursor. So F4. So we are currently at our return zero and we have not yet exited from our program. And we can go out and see the results that we have currently. And then with any good debugger, we can continue and exit the program. So this gives us some really interesting things. We saw previously that the register allocation is being done by the compiler already, so let's see if we can test that a little bit and see where registers are being allocated. So int i equals 10, and then let's say, let's return i. I don't know if this compiler is doing constant folding or not, if it's going to trace this. I'm guessing not. So let's put our breakpoint here, or not breakpoint, but let's do a run to here. Run, go to cursor. So it compiled, it ran, it printed hello world, we have not yet exited. So from our user screen output, we see hello world again. And now let's look at registers. So what do we have? We've got the value 10, that doesn't seem to be in AX, BX, CX, DX, it doesn't seem to be in any register that I'd expect it to be in. So I don't know what our registers are showing us exactly right here. It might very well just be constant folding, but I don't think I can get any disassembly output from it with the tools that I have available to me. Let's see if it's possible. So I'm really not seeing it, but let's try putting in a for loop instead, maybe, and then we can track our variable usage there. So we're going to do and we will do a run to cursor again. Uh, yes, I definitely want to rebuild. Okay. So we're getting ready to print the value i, uh, which is zero to the display. Let's look at our registers. Still not seeing any register. Oh, well, SI is currently set to zero, but that seems strange. I'd expect AX to be where I would be allocated to. Oh, there we go. So we are seeing in the, very, in the register SI, we are seeing our variable increment, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then A. And you know, that's, that's honestly pretty darn surprising to me because I know any modern compiler would have just used AX for a commonly used variable that's on the stack. But uh, there we go. We can see that it did the register allocation for us. We can step through the program. We can look at the registers. It's, I'd say, pretty cool. I think the only thing that I'm missing here is to actually see the disassembly output from this program. But it seems the version that I have here does not come with Turbo Assembler and I don't see any other option. So that's, uh, that's fun. But the other error that I needed to correct from the last video is I said there are no templates here, and it turns out I was completely wrong. It's just that they did not work like I expected them to. 
So I did template type name T with some sort of struct. And this doesn't compile because the keyword type name does not yet exist. It's not specifically a problem with templates. If I use the keyword class instead, then I can create my struct. So you totally could have made something like the STL here. And in fact, it does automatic parameter type deduction for things like function parameters. And there I go again, wanting to use type name. So now we have our min function, and we can do cout min of 3.4 and 2.9. And this should print 2.9 to the console. So let's compile it. Compiles without any errors. Run. We'll run. And then we will look at our user output screen. Oh. Hey, look, or you can have a completely separate output window. That's definitely better. So it printed 0 through 9 and then output 2.9. Very good. If only I knew how to close the windows, I'm going to have to use the mouse to do that. So there you go. It's even a better IDE than I gave it credit for. And in many ways, I kind of prefer this to some of the more modern IDEs that I've used. With just a few more tweaks, I could totally see using something like this for real. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.